Hi guys, uh, in today's video, I'm going to discuss about calendar system from mainland China. Big thanks for all of you who have subscribed, liked and shared my videos with friends and family. Those who haven't, please subscribe, like and share. In this video, I want to briefly discuss about calendar system in China, who and how it influenced one of the ancient civilizations. In the East, China, India and Japan had ancient traditional and scientific roots in developing a system that even today is very much part of their culture. It is not possible to justify Chinese history within 10 minutes, but we have tried to produce with some useful information with regards to traditional calendar. Roughly over 6000 BCE, the village and agriculture life began in mainland China, in pockets of China. There are evidence with grave objects buried with dead like bone divinations without writing. The first record dynasty that predates to 1500 to 1040 BCE, Shang dynasty ruled large areas of powerful kings. There are evidence with bone and shell divination with written inscriptions. Also, there are huge tombs with many offerings were practiced while rituals, kings and priests for ancestors and nature gods. In about 100 BCE, Emperor Wu of the Han Dynasty established Chinese calendar based on solar year. Now let's dive into the video. The traditional Chinese calendar is a complex blend of lunar and solar cycles, with 12 or 13 lunar months matched up to the solar derived seasons. It had first been formalized during the Han Dynasty and used the solar year of 365.25 days, or 365 days and 6 hours. China's calculations were ahead of Western countries. However, 50 years later, this same period was used by Julius Caesar to create the Roman Empire under the Julian system. When the Mongolian leader Kublai Khan conquered most of China in 1276, a variant of the original calendar, the Daming calendar was in use, but was centuries old and in need of correction. The Khan decided to impose his authority with a new, more accurate calendar, which became known as the Shoshi, well-ordered calendar. The task of creating was entrusted to Guo Shoujing, who is a brilliant astronomer. Measuring the year Guo's primary job is to measure the length of a solar year, and he set up an observatory in Khan Balik, the city of Khan, new imperial capital that would one day become known as Beijing. This observatory was the largest in the world at that time. Guo worked with mathematician Wang Chun by tracking the motion of the sun throughout the year. Both men traveled widely setting up another 26 observatories across China. In the year 1279, both announced that there were 29.530593 days in a month, and that the true solar year was 365.2524 days long, or 365 days, 5 hours, and 49 minutes, and 12 seconds, to be very precise. This measure was a mere 26 seconds longer than the current accepted measurement. Bravo to both Guo and Wang for their work and assessment of a solar year. Again, China was ahead of the West. The same figure was not independently measured and adopted for the Universal Gregorian calendar in Europe until almost 300 years later. Technological Advancement Guo Shoujing is a great technological inventor where he was involved in developing new observational devices and made several enhancements to the Persian equipment that was imported into China. Most importantly, he built a giant gnomon to a height of 44 feet. 
This gnomon was widely used in ancient China to determine the seasons, orientation, and even geographical latitude. This also allowed Guo to measure the angle of the sun with much greater accuracy. The Shoshi calendar was widely regarded as the most accurate calendar in the world at the time. As a testament to its success, it continued to be used for 363 years, making it the longest serving official calendar in Chinese history. China officially adopted the Gregorian calendar in 1912, but the traditional calendar today, known as the rural or former calendar, but still plays a role in Chinese culture. The traditional calendar used for weddings, family celebrations, and public holidays. Now let me conclude this video. I want to conclude by discussing the genius Guo Shuji. He was born into a poor family in the northern China during the Mongols, who were consolidating the, their control. A child prodigy who had built a highly advanced water clock by the age of 14. He was taught mathematics, astronomy, and hydraulics by his grandfather. In the late 1250, as we mentioned, Kublai Khan took the throne and chose the region around the town of Dadu near the Yellow River to build a new capital of Khan Balik, now known as Beijing. During this time, Guo was tasked with building a canal to spring water from the mountains to the new city. By 1219, Guo was the chief scientist and engineer for Khan's regime, where he connected Khan Balik to the ancient Grand Canal system that linked to Yangtze and other major rivers. Even after his death, his theoretical and technological innovations continued to influence Chinese societies for centuries. I hope you like this short video. Please share, like and subscribe. See you in our next video. Thanks you and have a great day.